Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kate Goldenring and I'm a software engineer at Fermion where we're really excited about the next wave of cloud computing with WebAssembly. And personally, I'm really excited to be kicking us off for the day. Um, I'm curious for how many of you out there is this your first WASM day? Okay, that's actually the majority of people. I was kind of surprised by that. Um, well, really excited to have everyone here today. And um, if it is your first time, we have sessions from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And as Liam mentioned a little earlier, uh, we do have a WebAssembly channel where you can keep the conversation going today and between um, WASM days year by year. And then if you are tuning in online, there is going to be a Q&A section on meeting play where you can ask your questions there. Uh, since I'm kicking us off, I should probably explain what WebAssembly is. Um, but instead of giving the technical answer, uh, with WebAssembly in particular, when people ask what it is, they seem to be asking, uh, should I care about it? And the CNCF wanted to address that question. Uh, so this was the first year that they sent out a WASM community survey. And what we all learned from it is that WebAssembly is disruptive, it has long-term potential, it's polyglot as ever, and it's an ecosystem that we are all building together. So the results from the survey were published this morning, I think about 30 minutes ago, and the link to it's there. But one of the notable and motivating results of the survey was that rather than seeing this technology as a short-lived hobbyist tool, people really see this as something that has long-term potential and a disruptive technology, uh, something that will change the way that we develop applications and the way that people experience technology in general. And companies of all sizes are already using WebAssembly. Amazon's using it in their Prime service, Figma, Adobe, um, and Google Earth. And so it's already here, um, but it's up to us to help it realize its full potential as a mainstream technology. And the CNCF survey also pointed to some areas where we can focus in and where we can help build out this ecosystem together. So WebAssembly started with the goal of bringing more languages to the browser, such as writing a C++ app for the web. And it certainly succeeded in that goal of being polyglot. You can see that people are using all different types of languages for WebAssembly development. But there are still some, there's still some friction and some gaps. In fact, three out of eight of the sessions today, of the full length sessions today, are focusing on the developments in Java, Python, and C Sharp to support a better and more fully featured WebAssembly, both in the browser and on the server side. And this is really important because the more languages we can bring into this space, the more people we can bring into this space and the bigger community we can have here. And people are not only using a lot of languages with WebAssembly, but there's also a lot of use cases. And what was particularly interesting about this is that when people were asked uh, what they're hoping to build with WebAssembly, the first answer in the CNCF community was not uh, web development, which kind of surprised me. So I did a reference trek. And Colin Eberhard's 2022 state of WebAssembly did find that web development was the main answer. So what this is saying is that this community in particular, the Cloud Native Computing Foundations community, is really excited about some of the potential of WebAssembly outside of the web, such as in the serverless space, the edge space, the IoT space, and more. So regardless of where people are using WebAssembly, it's clear that there are a lot of use cases and that it truly is a technology that will pervade uh, various areas of technology itself. So clearly WebAssembly has the potential to impact the way we use technology, um, but it's up to us to make it as approachable as possible. And beyond it, expanding the number of languages that you can use with WebAssembly, there are also other barriers that we can break down. And the schedule today shows that we're already taking active steps to do that. So we'll hear about developer tooling that helps you run WebAssembly apps in minutes. Uh, we'll hear about the component model and work in SIG registries that is going to help with code sharing and reuse. And finally, we'll hear that there are plenty of use cases for WebAssembly already today, such as running on the edge to inside databases. Uh, we'll hear about what, what, how WebAssembly aids with design tooling and how it helps with logging across the cloud and the edge. And so I'm really excited for the great day today, and I want to go ahead and thank our Diamond sponsors Docker and Fermion, um, and everyone who helped put this 
day together. So that being the committee, the AV staff, um, and the facility. And we have a great schedule ahead of us. Thank you.